Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Aisha Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Limsellem and Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh. Following the issuance of the Royal Order 29 of 2023 on adjourning the first session of the sixth legislative term of the National Assembly. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the Speaker, Chairman and members of the National Assembly for their dedicated efforts to serve in the Kingdom and its honourable people. He praised their valuable contributions in promoting development paths and strengthening the pillars of national action throughout the first session of the sixth legislative term, citing their efforts to highlight the Kingdom's civilizational accomplishments. His Majesty commended the fruitful efforts exerted by the legislative branch to carry out its supervisory role and develop the system of laws and legislation that serve the country and meet the citizens' needs. He expressed appreciation for the ongoing fruitful coordination between the legislative and executive authorities, welcoming the recent agreements reached by them regarding the state general budget. His Majesty the King affirmed that the ultimate goal is to achieve the interests of the homeland and its citizens and provide them with all means of a decent life, stressing that the Bahraini citizens will always remain at the core of the nation-building process and all the government's projects and programs. His Majesty noted the role of the two authorities in improving the living standards of the low- and medium-income citizens whose interests were taken into account in the agreed-upon state general budget, stressing the importance of continuing to achieve the goals of a financial sustainability and economic growth. Al Salam and Al Saleh affirmed that the Kingdom's legislative and democratic development at all levels is based on the comprehensive vision, national aspirations and His Majesty's wide leadership and unwavering support to continue enhancing national gain and achieve further progress and prosperity for the Kingdom. They expressed pride in the directives of His Majesty to consolidate efforts to build on the previous achievements in light of His Majesty's reform project and appreciation for the praise which the legislative authority receives from His Majesty. They affirm that the fruitful legislature executive cooperation is based on the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. They stress that His Royal Highness's keenness to enhance cooperation between the two authorities paved the way for exchanging views on the best means to continue achieving sustainable development and updating national legislation and laws to cope with the continuous progress and development in the Kingdom. They pledge that the two councils will continue to harness their capabilities to bring about more legislative achievements and bring to light Bahrain's distinguished and prestigious status in various fields. They affirmed efforts to build strategic and parliamentary partnerships with parliaments of other countries to benefit the kingdom and brotherly and friendly countries. <coughs> His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 5 of 2023 on endorsing the general state budget for the fiscal years 2023 to 2024, following its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Limsellem and the Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh at Gdibiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strong partnership between the Kingdom's executive and legislative authorities, adding that their achievements are the product of the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He noted Team Bahrain's role in helping advance a national development in line with the Kingdom's far-reaching goals. His Royal Highness noted that the efforts made by members of the executive and legislative authorities during the first session of the sixth legislative term led to the approval of important legislation including a draft law approving the Kingdom's national budget for the 2023-2024 to fiscal years. He expressed appreciation to the executive and legislative authorities for supporting the Kingdom's wide-ranging development, noting the importance of continuing to bolster efforts that benefit all. His Royal Highness noted that ensuring the interest of the Kingdom and its citizens remain at the forefront of development goals is a collective duty. He emphasized that Bahraini's determination and collective efforts will help the Kingdom achieve its development goals. 
His Royal Highness also emphasized the importance of further strengthening efforts between the two authorities across multiple levels to create quality opportunities and build a brighter future for the kingdom and its citizens. For their part, Lim Salim and Saleh expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting the kingdom's development under the leadership of His Majesty the King. They affirmed their commitment to continue strengthening efforts between the two authorities to advance progress for the kingdom and its citizens. A number of senior officials and members of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lim Salam following the issuance of a royal order adjourning the first session of the sixth legislative term of the National Assembly. Lim Salam expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to enhancing cooperation between the legislative and executive branches under the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Lim Salam noted that the cooperation that has been achieved is in line with His Royal Highness's efforts to further develop the kingdom and serve its citizens. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister also received a cable of thanks from the Shura Council Chairman Ali al Saleh following the issuance of a royal order adjourning the first session of the sixth legislative term of the National Assembly. Al Saleh expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to constructive cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities to further promote the Kingdom's comprehensive development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadibiya Palace. On the occasion of the royal order issued by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to adjourn the first session of the sixth legislative term of the National Assembly, the cabinet commended the strength of cooperation and coordination held between the legislative and executive authorities and their role in advancing the kingdom's national development. His Royal Highness directed the concerned government authorities to retroactively disperse the monthly living allowance for retirees from January 2023 to June 2023, following the agreements between the legislative and executive authorities during a discussion on the draft law on the national budget for the 2023 to 2024 fiscal year. He commended the two authorities' coordination in serving the kingdom and its citizens as well as the efforts of the public sector and the specialized committees of the Shura and Representatives Council throughout the draft law budget decisions. His Royal Highness also directed the concerned authorities to pay disbursement on living allowance for government employees and people with disabilities starting from June 2023 in accordance with the new agreements between the legislative and executive authorities. The Cabinet congratulated the Bahraini graduates who completed the school year, thanking parents, teachers and administrators at the Ministry of Education for their contributions to these educational successes. On the occasion of World Environment Day, the Cabinet emphasized the Kingdom's commitment to adopt more innovative initiatives, programs and solutions that enhance environmental security. In this regard, His Royal Highness announced an increase in mangrove plantation for 2023 from 230,000 to 460,000 trees. This reflects the Kingdom's commitment to the 26th US UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Goals, which includes a target to quadruple mangrove coverage by 2035. The cabinet then expressed its condolences to the Indian government and people following the collision of three trains in the Abala Sur district of Odisha state in Astan, India, in which the wounded a speedy recovery. The cabinet discussed and approved the following memorandums during the meeting. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft a decision to amend Article 2 of the decision to establish and form the Higher Committee for the Bahrain International Airshow. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Sustainable Development on the second voluntary national review outlining Bahrain's progress in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. 
The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the requirement guide on commercial activities as part of the initiatives aimed at developing government services for business owners. In addition, the government noted the following ministerial reports. On behalf of His Majesty the King, the Deputy Prime Minister's attendance and participation at the inauguration of the re-election of a President of Turkey. The participation in the 49th session of the Arab Labour Conference. The participation in the 76th World Health Assembly and in the session of the WHO Executive Board. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the International Reading Skills Test in the Arab region. The international accreditation obtained by the Bahrain Teachers College from the National Council for Accreditation of Teacher Education in the USA. The participation in the closing ceremony of the Formula One in Schools event in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The external participations of the ministers and the visits of foreign delegations to Bahrain. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, patronized the 11th mass wedding ceremony organized by the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation for Humanitarian Work to celebrate the wedding ceremony of 1,200 young men and women in the presence of UAE Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Royal Humanitarian Foundation RHF Secretary General Mustafa Sayed, and the Director General of the foundation Mohammed Al Khouri. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that relations between Bahrain and the UAE is moving towards more progress and prosperity in light of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the RHF Honorary President and the UAE President His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He noted that their directives continue to support citizens in both countries, stressing their keenness to support the Bahraini youth and providing a stable family life. His Highness hailed the depth of bilateral relations, commended the efforts of the Khalifa bin Zayed Foundation in supporting Bahraini youth, and noting that holding this ceremony reflects the strong relations between the two countries. His Highness congratulated the newlyweds and wished them success in their marital life. For his part, Al Khouri expressed thanks and appreciation to the leadership of both countries for their support of the mass wedding ceremony in Bahrain. For his part, as Sayyid expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness to support Bahraini citizens and the UAE President for supporting the wedding ceremony, which reflects the depth of the bilateral relations. He also thanked the Foundation for organizing the ceremony. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at Al Wadi Palace the students of the Nasser Al Banna project of the Ibn Khaldun National School, which is concerned with repairing, restoring, and furnishing the homes of needy families. His Highness affirmed that a humanitarian and voluntary work is one of the values inherent in Bahraini youth, reflecting the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for supporting charity and humanitarian initiatives. His Highness praised the project's main objectives, which is considered one of the distinguished youth initiatives that has a great impact on the souls of many needy families. His Highness also stressed that the initiative reflects the status of Bahraini youth and their active role in community service and their keenness on providing assistance to needy families, especially since the students themselves are the ones who carry on the process of repairing and restoring homes. His Highness commended the important national and humanitarian role played by the students participating in the project. Finally, His Highness Sheikh Nasser lauded the efforts made by the Ibn Khaldun National School in supporting students in youth initiatives to achieve the noble goals for the advancement of society, based on the national role played by the school since its establishment, stressing that the project is an extension of a series of social and humanitarian initiatives and activities.
President of the Supreme Council of Health, SCH Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated today the expansion project of the operations and remuneration rooms at Selmania Medical Complex, SMC. The opening it took place in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalil bin Tasayid Jawad Hassan, Government Hospitals Chairman, Sheikh Hashim bin Abdul Aziz Al Khalifa, Government Hospitals Chief Executive, Dr. Ahmed Mohammed Al Ansari, and senior officials. Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa commended the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also praised all the officials in charge of the project, which reflects keenness of the Kingdom and Government to develop health services and achieve the goals of the Comprehensive Development March. The SCH president took pride in our grating the pioneering projects which aims to further optimize the health services at SMC. The health minister described the inauguration of the expansion project as an added value to the initiatives aimed at boosting the health sector. She commended the efforts of the medical cadres in various disciplines, particularly the reruns. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, SCIA, has affirmed that politics is a lion to the roles of religious platforms and houses of worship, denouncing the keenness to turn some mosques into arenas for political chants and slogans during prayers. The SCIA stressed the need to preserve the sanctity of mosques and religious pulpits by devoting them to worshipping Allah the Almighty and not deviating them from their established legitimate purposes or exploiting them to perform other roles that they have nothing to do with, which would lead to insurement upon their sanctity and the role they are meant to play. In a statement, the Council affirmed that the religious platforms and mosques play an important and fundamental role in the lives of Muslims who use them to spread knowledge and virtues, promote goodness, righteousness and cooperation, preserve their thought and behavior, consolidate their identity and unity, and express their conscience. The SEIA called upon scholars, orators, and all faithful people to play their fundamental role in protecting pulpits and worship against a bad exploitation that could harm them, distort their image, and deviate them from their authentic role. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the world in celebrating World Environment Day, which falls on 5th of June every year, under the slogan, Solutions to Plastic Pollution. More in this report. كما تحرص مملكة البحرين على دعم الجهود الدولية في مواجهة التغييرات المناخية ونتابع بكل اهتمام ما يصدر من قرارات وتوصيات أممية لمؤتمرات المناخ نعمل على مساندتها والإسهام في تحقيق أهدافها لعودة التوازن البيئي واستدامة الموارد الطبيعية وعدالة الحصول عليها in the speeches of His Majesty the King, he always stressed the importance of preserving the environment and the optimal utilization of natural resources to protect the environment from any dangers or pollutants and increase societal and global awareness on the importance of preserving the environment. In doing so, we must harness our productive potential with the same drive that greeted the dawn of the industrial age, marshalling the might and innovation and human ingenuity to propel a greener and more prosperous world. In order to reach the desired goals for the environment, Bahrain placed the protection of the environment and its resources and the preservation of biological diversity at the top of its priorities with the close follow-up of His Royal Highness Three Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Kingdom of Bahrain was very keen on implementing national plans and strategies, approving laws and legislation, and establishing official institutions and agencies that guarantee the protection of the environment and the sustainability of the development process. The Supreme Council for the Environment under the presidency of the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has been able to coordinate national efforts in providing a safe and sustainable environment and taking measures related to the conservation and development of resources. The Kingdom of Bahrain's celebration of this day stems from its belief in the importance of reducing plastic pollution, which the relevant authorities are keen on consolidating through the decision to ban the manufacture, import or circulation of plastic bags, which is part of Bahrain's efforts to ensure a safe life for all. 
The Judicial and Legal Studies Institute held the closing ceremony of the second intake of the Professional Legal Practice Certificate Program. The event was attended by the Vice Chair of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, the Attorney General Ali bin Fadl al Buainin, and the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Nawaf al Ma'oudah. The Minister of Justice stressed the importance of the training program, which uh, the Institute developed to meet job market requirements in this speciality. As a primary objective of the program, law graduates are trained to practice law in English and acquire key legal skills. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dana, participated in the OPEC and OPEC Plus Joint Ministerial Monitoring Meeting in Austria. The meeting pledged a voluntary cut to limit supply, which started in April and will continue until 2024. He stressed the importance of strengthening cooperation with various countries in OPEC and non-OPEC Plus countries and implementing production cooperation aimed at stabilizing oil markets. He lauded the close relations between all parties in which trust, respect and understanding prevail in achieving OPEC's goal. The minister noted that OPEC Plus adopts its decisions to increase or reduce production according to accurate studies in the oil market and supply and demand rates to maintain market balance despite the global geopolitical and economic challenges. He affirmed Bahrain's commitment to all the organization's decisions that are in the interest of all member states. Minister of Housing and Urban Planning Amna bin Tahmed al Rumehi led Bahrain's delegation to the inaugural meeting of the second session of the United Nations Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat, which is held in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning will address the session tomorrow and highlight the kingdom's efforts in implementing the SDGs at 2030, specifically Goal 11, which stipulates making cities and human settlement inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. On the sidelines of her participation in the second session of the UN Habitat, the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning held a meeting with a general manager of Sheikh Zayed Housing Program, Mohammed Al Mansouri, at the United Arab Emirates. The two sides reviewed fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE and the efforts made in providing housing services to citizens. They also discussed coordinating efforts regarding issues on the UN Habitat meeting agenda. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning highlighted partnership between the public and private sectors in Bahrain and its outcomes in developing housing services. For his part, Al Mansouri praised Bahrain's efforts in developing its housing services for citizens and emphasized the importance of cooperation in exchanging expertise. Minister of Tourism Fatima bin Jafar al sayrafi welcomed her Saudi counterpart Ahmed bin Agil al khatib on his first official visit to the kingdom upon his arrival in Bahrain. al sayrafi stressed that this visit represents an important phase in strengthening cooperation relations in the field of tourism between the two brotherly countries within the framework of the wise visions of His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques and in implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister. As Sarafi affirmed the keenness of the Ministry of Tourism and the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority to exert the necessary efforts to boost tourism cooperation between the two sides to open horizons of development and growth. She also lauded the unprecedented development achieved by the tourism sector in Saudi Arabia, which is reflected in the number of tourists coming to the kingdom. Meanwhile, she noted the achievements of the tourism sector in Bahrain that exceeded the indicators of the last year 2022 to 2026. The minister noted that the development of the tourism sector in each of the two countries highlights the importance of strengthening cooperation between them in order to ensure more momentum for the growth and achieve the desired goals, exchange knowledge and experiences in various fields of the industry and provide a global model to follow in the field of developing the sustainable development and tourism sector. Under the patronage of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the concluding ceremony for the Bahrain Robotics Competition was held, organized by the Ministry of Education and British Education. 
The ceremony was attended by uh, the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Jum'a, who thanked His Highness Sheikh Khalid for supporting this national competition, which is part of his initiative to develop the capabilities of Bahraini youth and give them the opportunity to compete globally. The minister noted that the increase in the number of participants in the competition reflects its importance in motivating the youth to present creative ideas in the field of robotics and artificial intelligence. He highlighted the efforts of the ministry in enhancing the students' abilities in their creativity and artificial intelligence and thanked British Education for organizing the event. For her part, the CEO of British Education, Fatima Ahmed Kamal, expressed thanks to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for patronizing the competition and the ministry for its cooperation and support of developing robot and artificial intelligence activities in educational institutions in Bahrain. The winning teams, sponsors, and the judging committee were were honored and an exhibition for the participating student projects was held on the sidelines of the ceremony.